political field theory is the application of the more general concept within science of a field to interpreting social systems. The idea of a field has long since been used within modern physics to interpret how a pervasive force such as space-time or electromagnetism within an environment can be the cause of change in any given object. This idea was then applied to social theory during the late 20th century by the sociologist Pierre Bourdieu, who used field theory to examine how individuals construct social fields, how they are affected by such fields, and how they, in turn, try to shape them towards their own interests. This more general social theory can then be applied to understanding political systems and the socio-political fabric of society in terms of a multiplicity of different subfields and the influence those fields exert over the actions of their members. Here, we're interested in asking such questions as how the rules are created and altered by the actors, how a single political force may influence the entire social field, or how specific subfields can exert their own autonomy and agenda in the face of external influences. The origins of field theory come from the physical sciences, where one finds varied expressions in electromagnetism, Newtonian gravitation and Einstein's theory of general relativity. These theories tried to understand such physical phenomena as the motion of objects without some direct interaction, but instead as directed by some pervasive force in the form of the space-time fabric or electromagnetic field. Unlike the conventional understanding of causality, where variable A directly impacts B, field theory understands motion as structured by a set of forces whose relations create effects that do not reduce to the properties of individual units. This paradigm shift corresponds to a change from substantial to relational thinking in modern science, where the object of investigation becomes a system of force relations rather than the property of particular substantive objects. Field theory is a non-linear relational paradigm in that it is primarily concerned with the relations between actors. It is also holistic and non-linear in that it is looking at the whole environment within which something exists and the distributed set of forces acting on any entity within that environment. The concept of a field stands in contrast to most of social science, where the basic unit of analysis is some well-defined set of entities such as institutions, organizations, markets, individuals and groups. Field theory instead focuses first on the whole environment, what we call the field. Field analysis brings these separate units into a broader perspective that stresses their relational properties rather than their intrinsic features and therefore the multiplicity of forces shaping the behavior of each. Social field theory holds that what we see in social reality are institutions, actors, cultures, nations, but behind these lie fields that shape their actions. In a socio-political context, the term field may be loosely equated to the idea of a regime, where a regime is a system or ordered way of doing things. The term regime is an ancient one that was of interest to the Greek philosophers. As Aristotle defined it, a regime is the arrangement of society's parts, in particular that of its most powerful parts. He also called it a certain ordering of the inhabitants of the polis, or a certain way of life of the citizens. The ancients noted that the many different societies and cultures around them took many different forms and had different characteristics. The most striking difference was that between the philosophical and culturally sophisticated Athenians themselves and the authoritarian Spartan society. There was a recognition to the variety between societies, but also how people within those societies are so strongly shaped by the specific culture that surrounds them. Such a recognition leads one not to focus on the specificities of the individuals, but instead to identify how the context or social field within which people find themselves so strongly influences them. Thus we can understand a regime 
as the organizing structure that shapes people's lives, and how this can vary from one location to another, or from one group to another. The idea of a field as a powerful tool of modern social science was introduced by the social theorist Pierre Bourdieu in the late 20th century. For Bourdieu, social reality is constructed out of the interaction between individuals. Without interaction in some form with others, there is no socio-political system. What is real is relational. Social entities are defined by their difference in relation to others. In sociology, field theory has come to examine how individuals construct social fields and how they are affected by such fields. A field is a set of forces and rules within a specific social context that operates on the individuals to influence their thinking and actions. Bordeaux defined a field as a field of forces within which agents occupy positions that statistically determine the positions they take with respect to the fields. These positions taking beings aimed either at conserving or transforming the structure of relations of forces that is constitutive of the fields. For Bordeaux, fields denote arenas of production, circulation and appropriation and exchange of goods, services, knowledge or status, and the competitive positions held by actors in their struggle to accumulate, exchange and monopolize different kinds of power resources. Fields may be thought of as structured spaces that organize around specific types of capital or combinations of capital. Each field is governed by a rule set, which Bordeaux called doxa and defines as the universe of tacit presuppositions that organize action within the field. These rules exercise a set of constraints on the actions of the agents. Agents within the same subsystem will share a common set of rules. For example, all members going to say Mass in church on Sunday will agree that only the priest can talk during the ceremony. This is a rule operating in that field to modulate the behavior of the individuals in that context. According to Bordeaux's theory, each individual enters into a field with a habitus, which is their particular resources or what he calls capital. This capital might be social capital, such as the social connections one has. It might be economic, as in financial capital. It might be cultural, as in our values and education. The habitus is something we almost inherit through our educational background or our class background, which influences how we think, talk and act. It is one's cultural and social acquired ways of thinking and moving. This habitus or capital of the individual that is essentially subjective, becomes manifest and converted into symbols when the individual enters into a field. Your position within the field determines your taste and actions. Those with more capital tend to have a different certain habitus than those with less capital, like the distinction between upper and lower classes or high and low culture. Modern socio-political systems have evolved into a multiplicity of differentiated subfields, with the power relations within these and between these fields structuring human behavior. Examples of these subsystems within the overall field of a society might include business, academia and science, journalism, art, the military, religious clergy, etc. Each field carries its own rules of the game, its own social hierarchy, its own principles of social distinction for ranking and identifying the prestige of its members. According to Dr. Eric C. Hendricks, who studies regime theory, regime denotes the way in which social fields, their prestige systems, logic and conceptions of human accomplishment are differentiated from each other and hierarchized. Dr. Hendricks identifies a number of central questions when analyzing an overall field, such as what subfields are there and how strong are they? How differentiated is the overall field and how hierarchical is it? Traditionally, a field has been modeled as a square plane with dots placed into this to represent the actors. The vertical axis in this model represents the degree of capital that the actor has. 
where capital is the amount of value they have within that system. If this was a political field, that capital might be power. If this was business, it might be financial capital, etc. Actors higher up have higher prestige. Those lower down have less capital and less prestige within that domain. The horizontal axis defines how embedded the actors are within the particular fields and with the logic of that field. Those on the left are more engaged. Those on the right are less engaged as they are on the fringes of the field and more influenced by external forces and the general fields of the entire society. In particular, the general political and economic fields shared by all of the subfields. For example, if this particular field was the military, if you're on the left of the field, you would be a true soldier with your life dedicated to the service of your country, while those on the right may have just drifted into conscription in order to have a job and make money. Those at the top would be higher up in the military hierarchy, such as generals, those at the bottom would be soldiers. A society will then consist of a great many of these fields. Social fields are environments in which competition between individuals and between groups takes place, such as markets, academic disciplines, genres of music, etc. The overall dominant regime within the society will manifest itself in the outside forces that shape each semi-autonomous field. The most influential regime will be that which is most prominent across the whole system and affects all the different subsystems. For example, if we take the socio-political system of a country like Iran, all social systems are influenced by the overarching influence of the religion. This overall field exerts an influence on all others. Or in many free market socio-political systems, such as the United States or Hong Kong, the dominant force is that of the economic sphere, where commercial influences extend to all areas, while religion is more of a private subset. In other countries such as Russia or North Korea, the political institutions are the dominant regime. Sociopolitical systems will vary greatly in their degree of differentiation, that is to say how many subfields there are and how autonomous those subfields really are. For example, if we take a political system like that of China, China has a long history of field unity. The legal system and military has only a limited degree of freedom from the political legislative, while in other systems such as that of France, the judiciary, legislation and army are separate entities with their own autonomous sources of influence. As one set of rules are applied to a whole group or whole subgroup, while there are different actors in that field, this will mean that the common rules will make it easier for some actors and more difficult for other actors to pursue their interests. For example, in a society where homosexuality is prohibited, this makes it more difficult for a member of this group to pursue their desired social activities and maintain a favorable social status. While the rule may benefit those of a more macho mindset that wish to maintain a favorable position. By then changing this overall rule, it would make it easier to express oneself as a member of the gay community. Thus at any given point in time, some members will wish to transform the existing rule structures and others will wish to conserve them with some form of political struggle pursuing. In such a situation, players will make use of their capital and means of power to impose the rules on others that best suit their way of being. When actors enter into a field, they may try to use their capital to influence and change the rules of the field to their advantage. Fields feature different positions which social actors can occupy. The dominant players in the field are called the incumbents. They are generally invested in maintaining the field in its current form, as changes to the rules of competition risk destabilizing their dominant position. Fields may also feature insurgents, who instead aim to alter the field so they can successfully compete with the incumbents. The dramatic change in previously stable fields can come from either successful incumbents or insurgents from other fields, or from government-imposed rule changes. If an actor gains satisfaction within a system, he or she will gain a vested interest in maintaining that field structure. 
When there is mutual acceptance by actors within a system, there is an equilibrium or unity which better enables the social system to deal with external influences. A regime change can be understood as a restructuring of this political field. For example, in the French Revolution, the ancient regime of the king and Catholic clergy were displaced in a paradigmatic regime change that gave rise to a republican nation-state and a new kind of citizen with a new set of institutions.